we are back with Sabion, but this time we are with the latest Sabion 5.5. Now, Sabion 5.5 came out while I was editing the last video, so I fire up DistroWatch and go, oh look, there's Sabion 5.5. So, there was bound to be another review on the way, and here it is. This time it's the GNOME edition. Now, the GNOME, it's running the latest GNOME, which is, of course, uh, 2.32. And, of course, GNOME in itself brings a simple desktop to the fore. Uh, they're not going to be including GNOME 3 yet, but I'm sure they will be jumping right on board once that is ready to go. Uh, so, of course, look and feel as always. Um, desktop backgrounds, they have a good assortment of desktop backgrounds here. Got a few of their own custom ones, a few of the ones pulled out from the standard GNOME backgrounds. But overall, there's quite a good selection there. Uh, theme, the default theme, is a very dark one with just the standard GNOME Colors uh, folder set, uh, what uh, Linux Mint used to use in theirs. And I don't have too many complaints about the look and theme. I don't think that they're really trying to emphasize any amazing look and feel here because I think that the audience that they're aiming towards is one that is going to customize it to the nth degree anyway, so they're not really wasting too much time with the look and feel. It's a fairly standard dark GNOME theme. Uh, again, same background as the KDE version, and really I don't have any problem with it. Um, it would be nice to see a slight more icon differentiation between other distributions, and uh, the GNOME Colors theme is getting a little bit old, but I mean really, who's going to complain? It's a standard theme, people are going to customize this distribution however they want it, and so that's really I've got all I've got to say about that. Now of course, it is of course based on Gen 2, just like the last one, and I'm not going to spend too much time on that. What I will do is spend time on the applications that are installed by default. So, of course, under Accessories, we have Archive Manager, Calculator, Character Map, the Text Editor, GNote, instead of Tomboy Notes, which is an interesting inclusion, uh, Quake Terminal, which is what I'm using to record this program, which is, of course, the same yeah, Quake Terminal type thing, except for GNOME, which is the drop-down terminal. Search for files, take a screenshot, and, of course, regular terminal. Games. Again, few games in here. They've got the standard GNOME ones. So chess, five or more, four in a row. Uh, Lagno, Klotsky, Mahjong, Mines, Robot, Sudoku, Tali, and Tetrabex. Graphics. We've got Document Viewer. We've got Gimpy. We've also got the Image Viewer, which is the Eye of GNOME. And we've got Shotwell Photo Manager, which again is an interesting inclusion. So they're obviously dodging Mono as well uh, with. Uh, as they've left out F-Spot and, uh, and Tomboy as well. This is fully installed, by the way, so it's running at full speed with the 3D acceleration. Deluge BitTorrent Client, which is interesting instead of the default, which is usually transmission. GNOME PPP, for those who still use dial-up. We've got Firefox, which is running the latest 3.6 series, so 3.6.12. Obviously, they're trying to stick with the stable stuff here. We've got Pigeon Instant Messenger and XChat IRC. We're very familiar with those applications. Uh, of course, Office, Standard Open Office, Evolution Mail and Calendar, Programming, Entropy Development Repository Manager, just like KDE, and Glade Interface Designer. Now, this is a very interesting one. You can build your own GTK themes in here, which is pretty cool. I have not seen this included by default on any distribution thus far, so it is quite an interesting um, it is quite an interesting addition here. Obviously, again, they're definitely pointing towards those who know their way around Linux, who are wanting a maybe a solid, stable development platform where they can st where they can keep up to date with the latest software, but still have a solid base, which is, of course is Gen 2. Under Sabion, of course, we've got download locations, Gen 2 documentation, get live help, report bugs, Sabion Git repositories. Again, for those cutting edge developers, Sabion help forum, Sabion homepage, and packages, sound and video. We have Audacious. And again, this is an interesting choice of music player. Obviously, it's not too feature-rich, but that I don't think that's what they're aiming for. Again, these the people who are potentially going to be using this distribution have to like to set up their own system the way they like it, and they're not really going to spend too much time with the default applications anyway. They will include stuff that helps them get to get started, but they're not really going to give them the absolute best choice in every single situation, because quite honestly, if it's functional, it works, and it ties in with their keep it stupid simple principle. Procero, Disc Burner, Movie Player, Pulse Audio, Device Chooser, uh, sound recorder and of course the XBMC Music Center. System tools. We have quite a few things that are usually go under the system menu. So here we have CD DVD creator, Compass Fusion icon which you can see is up in the corner of my taskbar, configuration editor which is very interesting. It appears that you can they've put a shortcut to the Gconf editor which again they're not trying to hide things from the user. They're wanting to put things out there, put all the tools where the developers want them and where the power users need them. 
We've also got the Disk Usage Analyzer, Disk Utility File Browser, Log File Viewer, which again is geared towards those nerds who want to have a look at their log file to find out what went wrong, do their own troubleshooting, very helpful. We've got Magneto up Updates Notifier, which you can see is up in my tray as well. Uh, ma manage Printing Jobs, New Login, New Login a Window, and System Monitor. Now let's quickly have a look in the System Monitor. As you can see, it's not using that many resources at all. It's only 440 megs. That is while I'm recording a full resolution screencast as well at 30 frames a second. So it's handling quite well. The performance is pretty snappy. And this is on. this has been installed on an external USB drive. So it's actually performing quite well, and I'm quite impressed with it, in all honesty. Um, now, under Preferences, we've got Appearance, Assistive Technologies, Bluetooth, Compiz, Config, Settings Manager, Email Settings, e Emerald Theme Manager, and again, this is unique to Savion Linux uh, from a lot of distributions have abandoned Emerald for the standard GTK theming. So here you can you choose different uh, window borders, and they give you a choice of what window border manager you want to use, or what window manager. So they're obviously using uh, Emerald here, and you can choose from any number of a different uh, window border themes here, which is all pretty cool, and of course the default is uh, Sabion. Back under Preferences, File Management, Guac Preferences, uh, Java Control, Keyboard, Keyboard Shortcuts, Main Menu, Monitors, Mouse, Network Connections, Network Proxy, which is helpful. Power Management, Preferred Applications, Privilege Granting, Screensaver Sound, Startup Applications, and Windows. Under Administration, we've only got a few things here, namely the Package Manager, which of course is Sulphur, and I've shown you that before, so I'm not going to go into that again. Uh, now, let's have a look quickly in GNOME. It's, yep, 2.32.1, which is the latest and greatest as far as GNOME is concerned, until GNOME 3 comes along, that is. And along the top taskbar here, we've got our Search button. Uh, which is just standard GNOME searching. We've also got a brightness indicator here to adjust the brightness of your screen. We've also got a sleep inhibit button, which is also pretty cool. Again, it's I think that's definitely a tool that's geared towards the nerds who leave long downloads going or etc. etc. to stop your system falling asleep during something like that, or even like a movie. Um, all the codecs come pre-installed on Sabion, so you're ready to go out of the box. It's a Gen 2 rolling release. Uh, definitely, I've found out more and more that Sabion is geared towards the advanced users. It's, it's geared towards those who like Gen 2, who like to compile their software from source. They can download packages if they can't be bothered, and they provide a solid experience as far as that is concerned. But it's definitely a serious distribution. It's not one for the newbie. It's not one to show to people to convert them to Linux. But it's a great distribution in its own right. It has a solid community behind it. They really have some smart people working on it. So it's good to see that they're creating such a nice polished distribution. Interesting to see where this goes as of GNOME 3, what happens with the GNOME desktop, uh, because it's starting to sort of mark out a path as to which direction distributions are going. We've obviously got Ubuntu going with Unity. We've got uh, Fedora, which is going to back GNOME 3. So it's, it's going to be interesting what happens with distros like Sabion, who are neither one camp nor the other, but they like to tread a bit of both water, as well as KDE and XFC and a lot of the other desktop environments. So it'll be interesting to see where all this goes. But as of right now, it's a solid release. If you need something that's adaptable, it's powerful, and it's got all of those configuration tools you could possibly want or need, then you really need to give Sabion a go. I didn't have the audio issues that I had with KDE. I think those were just KDE related issues. As I've said in the past, uh, except for Pardis, I have had issues with KDE. So it's just some integration issues, some hardware issues, some uh, in-between software issues that I just can't get cleared up properly. Uh, under GNOME, I don't have any issues. It might also be because I've been using GNOME longer than I have been with KDE. However, KDE 4.6 is looking very, very nice. And I'll be looking for an opportunity to try that out. So if you guys have any suggestions for KDE 4.6 distributions, then let me know. I know a lot of the upcoming ones, such as OpenSUSE 11.4, will be shipping with uh, KDE 4.6. And I'm really looking forward to that release. But as of right here, right now, Sabion Linux 5.5, solid release, got the latest kernel, got the latest desktop environment, it's got a lot of good software packaged with it, its repository is practically endless, you can compile your own stuff from source, download it as a package, it's all up to you, it's configurable, it's powerful, it's Sabion Linux and it's backed by Gen 2. What more can I say? So it's really only a quick look, so if you're into configuration, if you're into Linux as an operating system, Linux to the core, then Sabion Linux is for you. Uh, one last thing, uh, what do you think about the new intro? Is it too geeky or is it too retro? Let me know in the comments below. If you like it, we'll keep it. If you don't, I'll change it a bit.